This episode of the Linux Action Show is brought to you by the good-looking folks at GoDaddy.com. Use our code Linux and save yourself some cash. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Linux Action Show, Season 23, Episode 7. My name is Chris. And my name is Matt. Hey there, Matt. Are you ready for a big show today? I'm ready. All right. Well, here's what we have coming up this week. So recently, over the last few weeks, the mm -hmm. big show has talked a lot about Unity. It has. Talked a lot about GNOME 3. A lot of GNOME 3. And uh, thanks to our recent OpenSUSE reviews, a lot about KDE 4. Gotta love KDE 4. And so one of the things, and I kind of expected this to happen, is over the last few weeks, we've been getting a lot of email into the show asking, well, what about XFCE? And oftentimes, folks have been recommending mm -hmm. their favorite implementation of XFCE. And so I've been taking all those emails, setting them aside, stashing them, stashing them, and then I went over all of them and I said, Boy, you know, there's some trends here, Matt. People are really recommending, like, overall, these three distributions are mm -hmm. supposedly excellent implementations of the XFCE desktop. Worth checking out. So we're going to check those out today, and we'll walk away with the one we think ranks the best. Plus, in the news segment, we're going to talk about Intel and AMD's new CPUs that supposedly don't support Linux. Mm. That sounds Head scratcher. Crazy. Plus a few other big stories. Mm -hmm. And we've got our picks this week, including an Android app that celebrates the iPhone 5's release because this okay. app <laughs> is one of those things that your iPhone using friends will never be able to do with their Android with their iPhone. Only you Android users can do. Ooh. And it's going to blow your minds and it's completely free. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, all right. Should all we right. do our Runs Linux pick first? Let's do some Runs Linux. All right, Matt, check this out. Over 1,200 schoolgirls. Woo. Run Linux. Wow. That yeah, is this... a lot of Linux and a lot of schoolgirls. <laughs> well, yes, Matt, you're correct about that. <laughs> this is uh, here, and we have some pictures if you're watching the uh, video version. Uh, this comes out of Westcliff High School for Girls. Mm. Uh, uh, you and I were tagged uh, on Google+, Plus, yep. and you made sure I saw mm -hmm. this, and I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, the, here are some screenshots of their deployment of OpenSUSE on the school labs. And you see they've even done a, cu mm -hmm. a custom login screen with Westcliff High School for Girls yeah. on there. It, it looks great, doesn't yeah, they it? they did a really nice job. Some shots of the whole lab. And uh, we have a news story that kind of goes along with this. But I, I, I love the nice, clean implementation of this. And mm -hmm. it's cool to see OpenSUSE being used in this capacity, oh, it's fantastic. too. fantastic. So uh, very awesome. And, of course, this is able to do all the things they need through LibreOffice mm -hmm. and the web. They use Firefox. Um, very, very awesome. And it's a great re – so they've, they're able to repurpose mm -hmm. some old e-machines, too, to save on those investments. Well, it's very tidy, very uniform, and I think very school-friendly. Yeah, their their uh, their IT guy, uh, guy or guys did it just uh, or gals or gals. They, or gals. Their IT individuals folk. did a f folk. There they did go. a great job. They did an awesome job. Yeah, should be yeah. commended. All right, Matt. Now uh, my Android pick this week. I am I am so excited about that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I cannot wait to tell you. I this I didn't have this on my list of shame. Um, I probably mm -hmm. should have because okay. the audience has been telling me about it for a little while, and I just didn't get off my butt to check it out until now. Uh, so I, I cannot wait to tell you about that. But before I get All to right. that, I want to say good morning to the fine fine folks over at GoDaddy.com and. Oh, you know, Danica Patrick, longtime fan of the mm -hmm. Linux Action Show, and people at GoDaddy love to hook up our audience. They do. So they have given us a code that'll let you get a .com domain for $5.99. What? Well, that's a deal. That's like giving it away. Yeah. You know that you know GoDaddy probably pays more than that for actually, these. Actually, I have a couple domains I need to be looking into. Here. I, know, right? I, might, I, might, I might actually do hey, that. Hey, you're an yeah. idea guy, Matt. And if yeah, you're an idea yeah. person, too, and you want to register a .com, doesn't mean it's going to be big. It's just an idea. So don't spend a ton of money. Use our code 599Linux yep. when you check out. You can also get up to three additional domains for just $7.99 each. Use our code 599Linux. Thank you to GoDaddy for longtime support big of Linux Action you. Show. Thank you, too, for their contributions to the Apache Foundation, mm -hmm. the Linux Kernel, and all of those things. These guys love of Linux, and that's why they sponsor this show, yep. and they help us bring these broadcasts to you every single week. So you can support the show by supporting mm -hmm. GoDaddy and using that checkout code 599Linux when you shop at GoDaddy.com. Nice. All right, you ready for some rapid awesome picks, man? Let's do it. All right, so the first one is my Android pick, and uh, like I said, this is a great one for all of you folks that want to make your mm -hmm. iPhone using friends a little jealous. It's called AirDroid. AirDroid. I, I like got to imagine, this mm -hmm. is so awesome, I got to imagine some people know about this. So here's my here's my Evo, right, Matt? And okay. I have it on my uh, I have it on my Wi-Fi, and you can see I have AirDroid running, and it says okay. here's your IP address. Address. And if I hadn't connected yet, it would give me, here's your one-time password for just this session. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it gives right. you a little uh, URL to type into your web browser. Sure. And it can give you either through their service or just mm -hmm. directly connect on your internal network. Great-looking interface. Yeah. yeah. So now that gorgeous. I've connected, 
Okay. Oh. Look at this. This oh. is a full-fledged in-browser-based desktop that's oh. actually running and fully integrated with my phone. So uh, as you can see here, I can get access to my text what? messaging, my call logs right here from the phone. Uh, I can also browse oh the files on my phone. So like here's my <laughs> SD card. Oh, let's go into my Amazon MP3 downloads. This, this is wireless. No cords. I love it. This is totally oh, this awesome, is right? So look, I can see uh, here's, uh, here's some oh, cool. big band music that I have on my SD card that I got off Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I could load it right into the MP3 player that's built into this interface. Oh, I can also do things like search for uh, apps on the Jupyter or on the Google Play Store. So watch, I'll search for yeah. Jupyter Broadcasting, and it will use an interface, and it will it will go up, and I can install these apps onto my onto my onto my Android from their you, UI. You know what I like the most about this, mm -hmm. besides the fact that the desktop looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, besides that, is the fact that if I want to mix it up a little bit and I want to play at the keyboard. Bam! Yeah. You can do that. Oh and yeah, you can use your full flesh yeah. keyboard and mouse. Uh, you can so cool. you can use it to compose text messages. You can use you can uh, so I could type in. They also have an oh, open man. this on your device thing, so I can type in oh, JupyterBroadcasting.com on my device, and then you can see here on my web browser, it's <laughs> now so loading cool. JupyterBroadcasting.com on cool. my phone. And of course, since Android does multitasking like a pro, this uh, this Air desktop. This AirDroid desktop continues to work just fine, even though I'm now browsing the web on my Android device. I need one. I, I, yeah, I, I got to get a new phone. Yeah, this is this is really <laughs> cool. Just, wow. This is so cool. You can also get access to all of your uh, photos and music. So if you've got like uh, your music library on your phone and you want to uh, listen to it uh, from your desktop, you can go browse it and play back your MP3s. Oh, my God. And it's all... It's all and it's, it's so fast. Yeah, it's very fast. And see, this is... I'm moving this around. It's all they're all widgets There's that are completely no delay. There's right. nothing. It's just Johnny on it. Yeah, it's it's really great. Uh, and uh, there you go. So there's a lot of you also God, see down here. So I great. get down in my tray, uh, quote unquote tray so, area, which isn't showing up on the video version. You mm -hmm. get battery life, Wi-Fi signal indicator, oh, cell yeah. signal indicator. You also get phone stats like your available space. Uh, things like that. So it's it's a very cool. You know, app. something else that occurred to me is if you're an Android person and you're say, oh, I don't know, wanting to do tutorials for family members that maybe are not as familiar on how to deal with apps and stuff like that, this is a great way yeah. to, to uh, set them down and to have a big screen that the two of you can look at and show them how to do stuff. Well, it it's also cool. will tie in with an online AirDroid component if you want. You oh. can create an online AirDroid account. You could actually have, you know, hey, mom, mm -hmm. launch AirDroid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom launches AirDroid. Okay, mom, give me back the one time code. And oh. then you go to AirDroid's website. So you can actually connect to mom's phone, upload photos, upload files. Mine's all officially stuff. blown. I want. I, I, I got it. Right. This. Oh and this is. God. I mean. I mean. The this iPhone, is the best pick I've. The seen iPhone in... five looks like a good piece of hardware, but you're not going to oh. be able to do that on the iPhone five. I mean, I, this this is the functionality I want. I don't want yeah. a phone that's just yeah. longer. And I want a, I want a phone that does this. You know? uh, AirDroid is. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't require root access. However, if you do have root access, it's actually capable of mm -hmm. doing a little bit more stuff. There's also a series of extra plugins that will give AirDroid even more functionality and it includes a built-in browser no so you kidding. can see all of those plugins and then just add them to AirDroid as uh, the the desktop. Interesting. Uh, it's, it's now does really it need cool. root for just to run or is it just yeah. for the additional functionality? Just for the additional okay. stuff. So mom and dad can still run oh, Android yeah. Locked out, oh, yeah. safe, not no, again. no special ROM yeah. required, nothing. Love uh, it. So Love it's it. called AirDroid, absolutely free okay. in the Android marketplace. You can find a link to it in the show notes. And uh, thank you to Majo who keeps a list oh, of all the Android picks. This is fantastic. So there you go, right? That's a good one. All right, <laughs> oh, that's great. So now I've got another. Uh, oops, I just signed out of the chat room. Now I've got another really exciting uh, desktop pick. All right. So that's the Android pick, and uh, check it out, AirDroid. But. Uh, I want to talk about email clients. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I feel yeah. like Mozilla has had a really mixed message with Thunderbird, right? Mm, yeah, they Thunderbird's did. dead! And then, oh, by the way, here's Thunderbird 15. It has new chat. And then, I don't know if you just saw this, but now there's screenshots of a whole bunch of new stuff in Thunderbird 16. Like new UI stuff. Yeah, like, what, what's up with that? Was there a division, I, you know? This isn't the first time yeah. it's happened with Thunderbird either. Thunderbird's been declared dead before. Okay. So I don't think they can do it. I don't think they're able to keep it. Down. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it, Matt. Yeah, like, and I don't okay. know where it's going. I mean, Thunderbird's okay. my my all time favorite email client, but mm -hmm. I just I don't know where mm -hmm. it's going. And uh, evolution, it it it, it needs Ugh. love. K mail has yeah. never made me a happy man. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Kmail and Evolution, are, that's, that's a lot of email client. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. But at the same time, not enough either. It's this no, weird no. thing. Um, so the folks who brought mm -hmm. us Shotwell mm -hmm. are now mm -hmm. bringing us Geary. And they're Geary. introducing an email client called Geary. It's available for, I believe, Windows and Linux, but I know it's available mm -hmm. for Linux. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is... It, the only thing I can really quite equate it to is a similar client that was available for the Macintosh called Sparrow. Okay. Uh, it's very clean, mm -hmm. very elegant, very fast. And let me tell you something, folks. I have 
a ridiculously large inbox. So like when I set up my inbox in Thunderbird, mm-hmm. I, I have to set it up, say like 7 p.m. at night. Oh, wow. And then I walk away and I don't wow. use it again until the morning because Thunderbird just has to process everything right. that's in my inbox, right? I loaded up Gary and it instantaneously was working. Like it, the way they're pre-caching headers and things like that mm-hmm. is extremely efficient. It's an open source app. Uh, it's available. Uh, f- there's there's a PPA to get it on Ubuntu, but there's also packages for straight up Debian and Fedora. It's completely free. Oh, it's Fedora compatible. That's cool. Yeah, okay. and and so and it looks great. Here's what's awesome. Here's what's awesome about Geary. Our own. Uh, Mike Dominic from Coder Radio is oh, yeah? joining the Geary project as an open source contributor. Whoa, that's pretty so cool. So one of our own guys is going to be working on this, and oh. uh, he's going to talk about his experience as a user, then joining an open source, you know, looking at it and saying, you know, I think I could help with this open source project, interacting with the community, joining them, becoming a member of the of the open source project. Mm-hmm. He's going to talk about all of those experiences in tomorrow's Coder Radio. Oh, really? So people, if you're, if you're interested in that, check out that episode of Coder Radio. Oh, that's Radio. a must listen. Yeah, yeah, he'll be covering his experiences. I love Gary. It's still in the early days. It's missing some rich text features. It, it um, is, but the, the one killer feature that struck me more than anything in the world and something that I love from, say, Gmail is the fact that the way they thread their, uh, yes. their emails. I love yes. that feature. Yeah. And as far as missing things such as, uh, I don't know, uh, junk mail filtering and all that, it's called pop file. Well, you and know, I pulled down you from know, Gmail. Set a pop file separate, you're fine. It has super easy integration with Gmail. So if you're a Gmail mm-hmm. user, it's like, what's your Gmail name? What's your Gmail password? And it keeps them all nice and separate. I mean, it yes. just and it's so lightweight. And, yes. Oh, yeah. I, th- I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, as you said, it's still early, but it, it has a lot it of is, potential. It is early, but... Uh, and. And like right now, uh, it's available for Ubuntu. They're planning to integrate HUD support. They're planning to integrate messaging support, mm-hmm. and so really make it part of like the Unity desktop. But they're still also they're still also making it available for all the other distros that are out there. Yeah, and see, I would I want to see I want to see support there. I want to see uh, some OpenSUSE. I want to see some, uh, the Fedora is already there. I want to see uh, you know Arch and so on and so forth. I want to make sure it's getting to those other distributions. Then they can worry about Unity. Yeah, you know, yeah. for myself. Yeah. All right, Matt. All right. So that's the app pick for Android. That's cool. the desktop pick for the Linux desktop. But I think it's time. All right. We make a distribution pick for the week. Ooh, I think it's time. See, most shows, Matt, they stash all of their picks for the week at the end of the show. Mm, we don't do that. No, we like mm-hmm. to give you stuff right out of the gate. You tune in, you're getting some goodies. You bet. Now, this week we're talking about XFCE desktops. And one of the Ooh. XFCE distros that didn't make it into our roundup this week is one called Vector Linux. Oh, yeah. And I think this just got a little love over on Tux Machines, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vector Linux is an XFCE-based distro uh, sitting on top of Slackware. Interesting. And they have some GUI management tools. Uh-huh. Uh, now, for, they've, they've released uh, version 7.0 a little bit ago. I've read there's a couple of maybe a little rough edges, mm-hmm. but if you're a Slackware person and you want to check out a great XFCE desktop, which if you're watching this episode, there's a good chance of that. I wanted to recommend Vector. We didn't get a chance to put it in our, our lineup, but they've integrated in a dock system, which a lot of people oh, I know like, nice. you know, and they've got some really great default selections. Uh, they've got uh, Opera in there for internet browsing, which I think is a bold choice. Uh, they're shipping it with mPlayer. They're shipping it with DVD codecs mm-hmm. out of the box, MP3 codecs, Java's out of the box, Flash out of the box. Uh, they're using Shotwell for graphics management. Good choice. And I also have Firefox included, of course. Now, what's interesting is because this is based on Slackware, mm. this might be a fun way for folks that have wanted to try Slackware but didn't want to go through all of the setup yeah. of Slackware. Yeah, I think so. Well, and what strikes me about it, and maybe you can kind of help me out with this, is basically Vector Linux is uh, basically an easier way to get into Slackware. Yeah. I believe it has like a, a GUI as far mm-hmm. as packaging ma- package management, yep. Yep. things like that. Yep. So you can get your Slack on. Without having to get your Slack on, you know yeah, exactly. I mean? You can yeah. you can you can you can take a dip. You can visit Slackware, but you don't have to move in. Right. And then, and then later, if you decide, oh, I like this place, then you can move your bags. You yeah. know, and then you can go through. Yeah, the you whole can process. go full full Slack. Yeah, full cool. Slack. Full Slack. You know, slack attack. <laughs> Correct. But anyway, yeah. So check out Vector Linux. We have a link to that awesome. in the show notes. Yeah, All right. Cool. Now, uh, a couple of things I just that I think are really neat. Uh, before we go jump into the news this week, is uh, a lot of times I'll plug the fact that Jupiter Broadcasting has extensions that our audience can install in their web browser for Chrome or Firefox. And then when they browse sites that are participating in our affiliate program, it'll automatically tag their shopping session for mm-hmm. us and contribute part of their shopping session to Jupiter Broadcasting mm-hmm. and this doesn't cost them anything. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And Rikai from the chat room has made these extensions for us and it's, it's been awesome. Oh, yeah. So Rikai just recently took it up to the next level and I think the audience could really, really love this. Uh, uh, Rikai okay. has posted both our extensions to GitHub. They're open source and we already have people oh, making cool. contributions back to the extensions. So now not only can the audience nice. use these extensions to support the network and keep the programming coming, but they can also directly improve the 
mechanism in which we do that. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, we have a link to that on GitHub. Thank you to Rekai for yeah. posting both the Chrome and the Firefox extensions on GitHub. If, if you're curious how these work or you have a few ideas or you have some issues you want to track or you have feature requests. What a great way or to you just want to say thank yeah. you. Definitely. Check it out. We'll have a link to that in the show notes now. While we're talking about stuff posted where people can publicly get their hands on, last week, Callisto was the Android oh, app yeah. pick, mm -hmm. the really cool new Jupiter broadcasting app that lets you listen to the live stream, listen to the back catalog, check out the chat room, and the calendar is posted over on Google Code. It's also open source. I believe it's GPL. Mm -hmm. And you can go grab the source code of that and check it out. Nice. Not to be outdone, Shane Kufel, he often goes by in the chat room, has an Android app for Jupiter Broadcasting that supports live video streaming. No kidding. And he's oh, also cool. posted that app up on GitHub. Right on. That's and I've so linked cool. to his blog post, which where he links to the GitHub post, um, and uh, you can read all about some of the features he's considering putting in. Also has a link to grab this one. If you actually want to get the uh, the HLS stream on your Android device, you can do that. But uh, yeah, so now cool. we have got uh, we've got We've got the Callisto app in Google Code. We've got Shane Kufel's Jupyter Broadcasting in uh, GitHub. And we've got the extensions in GitHub. So I, I love it because, you know, uh, Linux yeah. Action Show, we're talking about open source all the time. And now we're part of it. Boom. I mean, like, really part of it. We're right? doing I mean, it. That's cool. So uh, there you go. You can check out links to that if you'd like to uh, see those. Nicely done, guys. Show notes. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for doing that. You guys are really helping make a difference. And then it lets us focus on making awesome shows. Yep. And, and that is really where our attention needs to be. Mm -hmm. and exactly. So that's critical. So Cool. All right, Matt. All right. Let's do the news. So, what's new in the news? All right, Matt. That's a great question. Very timely, as a matter of fact. All right. right. Our Go top on. story in the news docket, in Spain, hundreds of thousands of students get access to Ubuntu. Cool. I thought I'd put a nice happy story at the top before yeah, we got to all the I, li I like stuff. where it's going so far. Canonical is making a big push in the educational system in Spain. Hmm. There are 220,000 Ubuntu-based systems being deployed for students. Uh, a Spanish technology and engineering company implemented 220 Ubuntu-based workstations in more than 2,000 schools. Uh, now, uh, this is a statement from Canonical. Used by over 600,000 students and 75,000 students, the Ubuntu-based system is now accepted is now an accepted standard in schools throughout the region by the end of 2012 4000 schools and around 1.5 million students and nearly 200,000 teachers will be using ubuntu every single wow. day uh, the company also has an existing deal with asus in portugal delivering pcs preloaded with ubuntu there and canonical's deal with dell in china is going strong in fact so strong canonical announced it's expanding its chinese program with dell from 220 locations to 3 350 retail outlets, a significant expansion. That's interesting. Well, and it's cool to see uh, OpenSUSE, uh, Ubuntu, and potentially maybe some other uh, distributions as well making their way into schools. I would like to see more of that here in the U.S. Uh, we have some of it, but not nearly as yeah. much as I'd like. But, hey, you know, more power to them. Well, That's and cool. it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, large-scale deployment that I think uh, if uh, they didn't sort of tout themselves would mm -hmm. fall off our radar because it's just one right. of those things that's right. we don't even realize that canonicals out there I mean, they don't really talk about it so much no and 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 what other distros out there like really actively making these partnerships in right. these deployments i mean i don't know i yeah i i know that i i know open is certainly among them i i believe there's probably some others out there as well but it seems like that they're taking the head of it uh it seems like yeah. we're seeing a lot more ubuntu in that space and so. you know their co their combination with their partnerships with like dell and system mm -hmm. 76 that who helps. both have have great relationships with educational uh they outlets do. are it's, it's it's genius all right now let's talk about something that's not so genius. This, I think, was probably one of the bigger stories in the Linux world this week. I think uh, so. Intel's developer conference uh, just uh, came and went, and uh, there it was announced that Intel's Atom chip, the Clover Trail, mm. are designed for Windows 8 and not for Linux. Hmm. Well, I see a couple of different ways of going. I have a couple people have pointed out, and I'd say they're correct on this, is that easy solution. Don't buy computers with it installed. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, that is an option. As long as there's always alternatives that are comparable out there, right. then, you know, that's their loss. So when asked specifically about it, Intel says Linux is not supported. It doesn't mean that you won't be able to run Linux mm, on yeah. these chips, but it means that Intel isn't offering any support. Oh, that may not uh, be a big deal then. The the, uh, the graphics core in Clover Trail chips uses Imagination Technologies Power VR. Hmm. Uh, Intel doesn't have the rights to distribute the source code or drivers for this chip. 
Um, this is, would hardly be the first member of the Intel Phantom to, uh, f- uh, family to have this. Uh, the Atom Z series also has the GMA500 and the GMA600, which also use PowerVR chips. And uh, now I read somewhere that that may have been part of the logic as to why yes. they're not supporting Linux. And right. if that's the case, then, you know, well, Intel sucks because of why? Because they're covering their butt so that they can support Linux in other areas? Well, you know, I, I don't I see a problem with it. I don't, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't agree with it, but hey, you know, more power to them. I don't. Care. I have a feeling that you know. in some cases, and it depends on what reports you read, uh, mm-hmm. Linux and Android are being interchanged. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's true. It, on the heels of this, AMD also announced that their Hondo APUs will not be Linux friendly. Uh, AMD Steve mm. Belt confirmed to the Inquirer that initially this ultra low power APU will be a Windows only product. Linux slash Android support isn't being ruled out entirely, but they're giving Microsoft exclusive rights at launch. Yeah, there's some dollars being pushed with a snow shovel here someplace. I can feel it. I, I can I can actually hear the grinding sound on the pavement as the dollar bills are being crammed into someone's kitty. Yes, and and, mm. and this would completely fit with a, a history that Microsoft has in establishing these exclusive partnerships. Yep. Now, uh, let's let's zoom out for a second and, and analyze mm. this situation. I think there's a couple of things at play here that are sort of like elephants in the room. Uh, number one, uh, what this is is this this Intel chip, this uh, this uh, Clover Trail chip, mm-hmm. is an intermediary chip. Okay, right. this isn't the big show. No. We actually don't really care about this chip. Uh, what we really care about is the next Atom system on a chip, which is going to be called Valley View, okay. and this will have Linux support. Okay, and also down the road, uh, what what the, the the thing that we really care about, and this was announced this week, although it had been leaked earlier, is Haswell. Oh yeah. Okay, now Haswell. What's interesting about Haswell is it's one common common architecture from the cell phone to the server. Oh yeah, no, that's a big deal. And it's going to be full Linux support. Mm-hmm. There or there's already code in the Linux tree for Haswell support. Okay, that's how far out it already is. And this is going to be it's going to be shipping mm-hmm. for laptops and desktops Q1, Q2, 2013, mm-hmm. and then it's going to be hitting cell phones and uh, server chips in later in the year. And this is the real chip. This is the chip we care about. And, of course, it will, in fact, work for us. So that's fine. Yes. I mean, I say, you know, so Microsoft wants to compartmentalize themselves in these little bubbles with their little whatever it is. Fine. You know, I think cares? what it is is I think it's an act of desperation. And yeah. I think it reveals a very bad uh, hand of cards that Microsoft's been dealt. Uh, here's, here's the way I look at this. is uh, This is obviously a backroom deal. But yeah. I think the reason, the, the genesis for this deal isn't just to screw Android and Linux. Because let's be, let's be honest, this really isn't about blocking Android. It's probably no. more about blocking, or it's, it's more about blocking Android than it is about blocking Linux. Well, it, more than anything for, and, and I, uh, don't kill me for making this a Microsoft thing, but basically more than anything is they're trying to identify why someone should care about their products. I mean, that's the underlying issue that yeah. they've had yeah. from marketing all the way to development. Well, you know, I agree. And, so they're, and I'm without spending tons of time on it, Long story short, they are trying to and you know create an ecosystem to where it's like, look, we're still relevant. They can't do it competing head on with iPhone, Android, and these other things. So they have to create something that they kind of are separate and unique on. But at the end of the day, I don't think anyone's still going to care. I agree. They've not identified a market that is genuinely interested in their products. And Android and I th- iPhone have. I think this establishes that these first round of of Intel based uh, Windows eight tablets yeah. are dead on arrival. And the reason yeah. I think that is this chip is a stopgap chip. Intel is already working on a better chip, but Microsoft needs to ship the holiday season, right? So this so is a rush to, order. Okay. So what they've done is they've worked with, they've, they've contracted with Intel and AMD, and they have access. It's not just about the power of VR chip. Microsoft's Windows 8 operating system will literally have hmm. lower level access to the processor to turn things on and off for power management that aren't normally available to the operating system. Right, right. This is an act of desperation. Yeah, They're trying is. to shoehorn a CPU that's not really meant to do this mm. because these newer CPUs are going to have this ability built into them, right? So they're trying to shoehorn this in, and, and, and Intel looks at it as this. Intel has been the underdog, right? Yeah, in the yeah. mobile space, they are getting lapped by ARM. Yeah, they yeah. have missed this entire ARM wave of the current generation of computing. Mm. Intel's just been left behind. Well, I think they were dismissive early, and it kind of bit them in the butt. Right, they hated the Atom at first. Yeah. 
And, and and to make matters worse, what they have demonstrated has never really lived up to promises. So they yeah. constantly have overpromised and underdelivered in this mm-hmm. space. Microsoft is in that same exact position, constantly overpromising and underdelivering. So you've got these two companies that are overpromising, underdelivering, coming together. And Intel probably looks at this and says, if these Windows 8 tablets go out there and they bomb in power usage, we'll say, well, that was an exclusive deal with Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Our chips down the road won't be like that. Don't base your predictions yeah. on this. This is a one-off deal with Microsoft. So Intel is totally positioning themselves to just jettison everything with Microsoft yeah. if things yeah. go, down the, go down the tracks, right? Well, another advantage Intel has is that for the end user, it's behind the scenes stuff. No one looks at a tablet and says, oh, that darn Intel. No, they're saying, no, this darn experience that right. having. So if the Microsoft right. tablet fails, they move on to well, the other it, tablet or a device that has the stuff. Come out, if it did come out, well, you know, these other tablets are using ARM CPUs, and that's why the iPad and the Zoom get nine yeah. hours of battery life, and yeah. this Intel tablet only gets four hours of battery life. Well, Intel will say, well, that's just <laughs> that's, when that's a Microsoft day. thing. Exactly. You wait till Haswell is yep. out. You're going to be impressed, right? Exactly. So there's a little bit of that going on, too. And at the mm-hmm. same time, you've got Microsoft paying the pockets of AMD oh, and yeah. Intel. And Intel's going to play both sides. Now, know. I think, though, all of that said, and so I think that's why this doesn't really matter at all. All of that said, though, the elephant in the room still is, I think as a Linux community, we look at this and we go, mm. This feels like it's happening all over again. What happened on the desktop market, right? It feels like yeah, it, it feels it, it like does, maybe we're third class again, and and they're developing. But products. because of what you said, it's not. That's not what's going to happen. This is basically a shut Microsoft up chip, and move on from there. I, mean, I agree. It, it, it's 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 a mood issue. So. And Intel's done this before. Yeah. Intel built a custom chip uh, for the first generation of MacBook Airs. The first, so they did a custom deal with Apple. Nobody else got that chip. Only it didn't come out as headlines. This chip doesn't support Linux, right? Mm-hmm. That wasn't the headline then because I guess Linux wasn't as relevant. I mean, like Mark, Michael Larbel Larbel points out on Phronix, it's mm-hmm. actually newsworthy that everybody is looking at this as it doesn't support Linux, and that's a big deal. Right? That's very cool. So I think that's a good. Trend I think too. it's a very good thing. Uh, so I would say, uh, it, and sometimes it doesn't pay to be first. Let, like I said, let Microsoft screw it yeah. up so that then yeah. the alternatives can come in on their white horse, riding in to save the day. Hey, that's great. You and know? and you know what? Uh, it, it's it's all just a matter of time. If you don't like the weather, uh, just wait. It'll change soon enough yeah. in Linux land. I think we're going to be pretty happy. There's no with precedent Hasbro. being set here. Don't sweat it. Right now, while we're talking about Intel chips, we're talking about performance. We're mm-hmm. talking about a power VR GPUs and things like that. Let's talk a little Left for Dead playing oh, yeah. under Linux, running on an Intel GPU. Now, this uh, is on Ubuntu 1204. Mm-hmm. This is a Valve employee giving a demo. And you can see, now for you audio folks, we'll describe it. Pretty fluent gameplay on an Intel GPU. Now, a couple things that I remember reading about this was a resolution and uh, right. frame rate and things were, are, you know, th- they were toned down just yeah. a touch, I believe, yeah. because of the fact that it is a uh, integrated CPU yeah. or uh, GPU rather. But um, but outside of that, it's pretty flawless for what it for what it is and for what it's doing. It's actually butter smooth. Yeah, uh, he uh, he goes I'm through and he does a little gameplay, and I gotta say, you know, it, it passes the sniff test. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and I don't expect this to be a great experience. And I'm not even I don't even care if it's a bad experience to be completely honest, because this are these are the uh, quote unquote the last generation Intel GPUs at this point. I think for a casual player, I think this is I think it's reasonable. I, uh, hardcore folks, I don't think are going to necessarily want to go this route, but I think for a casual gamer, yeah, I, 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 I'm just really impressed with how good it is. Okay, now well. that said. Benchmarks have been done now by Intel mm-hmm. on the new Haswell GPUs. It'll be out in 2013. Oh, okay. And you remember last week, or I think it was last week, we showed a so. chart of each generation of Intel GPU has a significant performance mm-hmm. increase. Yep. And while the integrated Intel GPUs not so hot now, right? The trends indicate they're getting very competitive. And I am—I got to admit—I'm totally happy to let to shake up ATI and Nvidia's grip on the market. Definitely. And these open source drivers—that's the other thing—is Intel's open source drivers are performance hounds. You know, so they're really getting a lot out of these. Give it some time, and yeah. I think we're going to see that continue to t- continue so, to increase. Haswell sure. continues this in, this trend. Uh, Intel showed that the integrated GPU of the Haswell CPUs is able to run the game Skyrim fluently at 1920 by 1080, so full 1080p play. Uh, the benchmark demonstrated that they doubled the performance of the integrated GPU on the Haswell chip compared to the integrated GPU of Ivy Bridge, the current system. That's, uh, so if, that's pretty compelling. Yeah. So if you bought a modern day Intel, like uh, GMA, you know, Intel four, uh, mm-hmm. GMA 4000 or whatever it is, right? The, yeah, I believe uh, so. Yeah. Uh, it's double the performance of that. Um, 
The, the Haswell chip that uh, fluently ran Skyrim at 1920 by 1080 wasn't specified other than it was, quote-unquote, one of their mobile CPUs, which was mm. built into a desktop system for the demonstration. Uh, however, they expected to be the higher end of the mobile CPUs. Uh, next, uh, next to it was an Ivy Bridge notebook, mm -hmm. which would also, which was also running Skyrim, but could only run it at 1366 by 768. Uh, and they had to turn off a lot of the same, a lot of the yeah, fancy options. That's understandable, but still, the fact that it ran. <laughs> so the Intel that. GPUs, uh, I'm getting excited they're about. They're coming that. a long way. I think they're, they're something to watch. Yeah. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting there slowly. And that's why. So well, well the HD, you know, the H, the GMAs, like the HD 4000, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little underwhelming. You know, they yeah. make fine. They they do they do desktop compositing fine. But uh, I think we're seeing a trend. I think, uh, you know, I, I, I totally understand that we're not going to necessarily replace uh, dedicated graphics with this at this point. But I think it does give us an opportunity to say, OK, you've got my attention. Continue to impress me with your changes yeah. and your growth. Yeah. Let's keep an eye yeah. on it. And, you know, they, they continue to be the lowest power GPUs that produce the, le yeah. the least amount of heat. When you have a small notebook, that's mm -hmm. important. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that's the exchange. You are talking low impact as far as, uh, you know, usage. So, uh, like two, three weeks ago, we covered a community effort to go through and organize all of the Steam Greenlight projects mm -hmm. that were capable of running under Linux. Now, Steam Greenlight is similar to DeSora's uh, uh, crowdfunding approach to mm -hmm. getting a game in Steam, although with Greenlight, you're not actually spending any money. You're just voting. Oh, that's kind of cool. So, uh, Steam you have has a little bit of a say there. Yeah. 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 You get a little vote to see if it should be reviewed by the Steam folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, Steam has officially assembled a Steam Greenlight page. Four platforms that run Linux. So now, if you follow the link that we have in the show notes, you can you can go now and vote for games that should be put in the Linux Steam Store. I went through and voted for everything that was a space game. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah, it's yeah, a given, right? I mean, I but, don't know. you know, you, there's a lot of really good looking games in here, Matt. And w w if, as long as you're signed in, you find the game you want, and you scroll down where you would normally have the purchase option, and instead they just have a they just have a question: Would you buy this game if it was available well, on Steam? It's nice and big. It's clear. Yes. I want, I'm interested. No, right. not interested. You got right. some video. You got and you can go check out all the stuff. different games. You get the yeah. trailers. It's just like a regular Steam store posting, only you get the option to vote, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. There's a few pages where it's, so go through the pages because there's some good ones in here. And for audio listeners, basically you're arriving at a nice uh, minimalist page with necessary imagery to demonstrate what this, you know, what the game's graphics as far as like the cover box might look like. Yeah, yeah. And then you can click into each one and actually see the gameplay. Uh, you can actually... Uh, Report it, share it, favorite it, you know, like it, dislike it, whatever you want to do. It's it's actually a pretty cool little setup, and it's very clean. A couple of neat ones yeah. are uh, Walking Mars. Oh, uh, I love that. That's yep, cool. This is a good one. And then also uh, Orbiter, which looks like a really cool space shooter that has uh, some cool physics aspects mm -hmm. to it. Um, just really exciting. Oh, just it's to, gorgeous. Yeah. You see all the stuff start to assemble, and I love that I'm – what I hope this means – is that when Steam launches for the Linux desktop, it's not just left for dead in the store. Right, exactly. We'll actually have multiple titles available to us. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So go check it out. That's a great way to get some indie games yeah. into Steam, too, and make those indie uh, developers a little bit of cash. Definitely. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about HP. All right, let's talk about HP. Meg Whitman, the new CEO of HP, mm -hmm. uh, said, uh, yeah, on a, on, a, on a finance call. This is uh, Fox Business reporting this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ms. Whitman says, we're working on a uh, smartphone. We ultimately have to offer a smartphone because in many countries of the world, that would be your first computing device. And we're a computing company. On this, uh, she also said they're 20% through a five-year restructuring process. Yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> let's see. So HP buys Palm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to not. Right? <laughs> releases yeah. a new, releases the, wow. uh, the uh, HP tablet, releases mm -hmm. a new device, uh, then kills WebOS, then brings it back, but then open sources it. Okay, so I'm thinking here, I'm thinking, all right, this sounds horrible, but maybe, maybe H could, HP could do something like, uh, you know, a general computing smartphone mm. that has an open bootloader, like, you know, uh, like, like how I can buy an HP computer and load any x86 compatible operating system. At the end of the day, just strictly from a market point of view, if you don't have a market that is different, that's different, uh, differentiated from everybody else, good luck. Yeah. Um, you're always going to be competing against established players, and they they had an established situation with yeah. WebOS and a well respected, they, a well platform, respected, just not hugely adopted. Yeah, it wasn't, it, you know, it, there wasn't as much mainstream adoption as there could have been. But had they stuck well, with it, that's because they deployed know, it on a mediocre uh, hardware that just, broke down a lot on the Sprint network. Yeah, it sounds like the early days of uh, Linux desktops at Walmart. Actually, I, yeah. I watched that same kind of that same type of happenstance yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, I, I really I want to see them do well here, but again, it's it they're they're Microsofting it. To be, for yeah. lack of a better description, well, they really are. So then I thought, I thought, then I thought, well, my God, what if they go Windows Phone 8, right? 
I can see that happen out of, out of sheer. Oh well, clearly it's a Linux problem. Why no one wants our phone? So let's let's put something that really no one wants on. I mean, I can totally see that happening. Well, the same and week, that'll seal the deal for him. For the sure. same week that Meg Whitman made this announcement, benchmarks showed up on a community website showing an HP phone called Bender mm. running Android 4.0. Props for future Rama Bender. Um, outside of that, though, I'm a little concerned that we have a little uh, for the audio listeners. We have future Rama, future Rama Bender holding up a sign that says "We're, We're back, back, baby." Uh. Woo! So you know that's cool, but honestly, it's vaporware as far as I'm concerned at this point. I have not seen any actual <sighs> let's, uh, results. Let's see what these people dug up. So GL Benchmark, a set of test results that show the device's code name mm. Bender mm -hmm. with HP branding sitting on right on top of it. Powering sure. this device is indeed it is a real device. Okay, uh, is a quantum. Quali or a Qualcomm S4 dual core processor. Hmm. This is all sitting on top of Android 4.04 with a 1366 by 720 resolution display, and the uh, CPUs are clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. Okay, I'm good with that. Um, really though, Android when they have WebOS and Android 4.0. Well, and I'm not. No! See, that's that's no! that, that's a differential point of view, not because of any emotional love to one. Uh, one option versus another, but from a real, you know, rather than being different, again, it, it comes down it's to It's a me too thing. It's, it's a, a me, me too, too product. It, it, it's, you know, and, and I love Android, but they have an opportunity to be unique, different, uh, potentially do things, look at what the other guys are doing wrong and, and, and build from that. What if, uh, I mean, if they really are doing this for know? emerging markets where your first device is a mobile computing, why not go WebOS? Yeah. See what the hell happens. Exactly. Well, and now that it's open source and you've got, you know, outside contribution and you're not having to bankroll, I mean, come on. It feels um, like they're looking at this going, no. well, crap, people aren't buying as many PCs. I guess we got to get into this regardless. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, I, I, and I rip on tablets and, and phones, but they are where the growth is at. That's that's factual. Um, you, yeah. know, uh, you know, you want to make bank, you want to just absolutely just have your own little niche. I'll give it to you, HP, if you're listening to me. Folks over 50 that have never owned a smartphone before are sick and tired of the one to maybe two phones that are available when they're there for an upgrade. Offer a new user, senior friendly smartphone. And I know it sounds boring, but I'm telling you. Yeah, I think that's great. And you HP know? has has a little cachet with that crowd. Yeah. You know, that HP is a brand name that's been around a long time. A oh, lot yeah. Of HP when I was computers. doing repair, most of the people of 50 and up or 40 and up even were you, or a lot of times were on HPs. They know your brand, you're an old brand. Go use your heads here, guys. Come on. What could they possibly Ugh. do that would make me buy an HP Android phone over a Galaxy S3? Exactly. What You're, could they you, possibly Samsung, do? Yeah, it, Samsung, you know, Samsung is owning it, and and then exactly. and all the other guys are getting all the leftovers. Right. And so why 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 piecemeal over that when you have a gigantic market, a lot of them with retirement savings and spendable income that are that want to be like their kids, but don't want to frustrate themselves to death doing it. Now uh, we know? do this show live uh, Sundays at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, which. Uh, uh, chat room, put what time zone you're in and what time it is in your chat room. I'm going to yeah, switch to you in a second. Now, chat room is always asking, you know, hey, you guys, you guys going to talk about this? So they're always mm -hmm, making suggestions. Mm -hmm. So we always invite you to join live yeah. over jblive.tv. And Ping Guy in the chat room is asking, are we going to cover this whole, and I, I, I haven't pronounced it out loud yet, I, I run OS, this whole snafu. Okay. So there you go. It's 1 p.m. Eastern, and it is, wow. uh, let's see. 1900. 1900 in Germany okay. when we're live, and we're live uh, at uh, 1900 in Central Time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And... Uh, this, did you did you follow the story where Google contacted Acer and said, "Look, if you if you work with these people and you release this device, we're going to pull your Android contract." No, us. I hadn't heard of that. Oh yeah, yeah. all right. So I'm going to read up a little bit more about it because there's still a lot of stuff okay. coming out. We might cover it next week. Yeah, but boy, it, it. people are upset at Google. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure we'll be following this in the Linux Action sure. Show subreddit. So if you go to linuxactionshow.reddit.com, you can see the stories as they break there. Look at, wow, we have, uh, we have. Uh, Crazy. Oh, uh, all the it's it's 7 p.m. in Denmark. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Nice. <laughs> all right. So uh, cool. moving on, just a couple of stories we're going to get to before we get to our XFCE roundup, Matt. All right. Uh, this show, big fan of VirtualBox because we love to test distros. It's nice I to throw do. them in a virtual I box. Do. New release of VirtualBox 4.2.0 is out. Mm -hmm. And you Linux users, guess what? They now have drag and drop support between the host OS and the guest OS. So you can take a file from your desktop, yeah. drag it into the guest session, and it'll copy into the guest. That's nice. That's nice. One thing to say about it, and I'll let it go. 
have you fixed your USB stuff yet? Because if I have to hack that together one more time, I'm going to pull my hair out. So seriously, you know, guys, there, fix it. There is uh, yeah. there is some USB work, but you know they've broken that out now, where you have to get these separate the separate. Uh, well, I mean, like you follow stuff. you follow the instructions to the letter. You even uh, yeah, I, I you know I can usually get it to work if I massage it enough, but it's just it, come on. The GUI has received some work in this episode. Okay, or I mean well, in, this, uh, in this release, so that, it might that, be better. That no, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. I'll, ta- uh, I'll take a look before I grab too much. Support for up to thirty six virtual network cards has also been an a- added uh, in combination with ICH9 chipset which gives you a little better performance mm-hmm. and uh, support for Windows 8 guests and hosts if you want to try that out as well as grouping your VMs together and mini 3D fixes. Mm, okay. so box yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll have to take a look. Yeah, yeah. All right, Matt. Now, well, uh, before we uh, mosey on out of the news segment, right. I thought we'd uh, say happy birthday to X11 which turned 25 years old this week. Whoa! Man, it <laughs> really makes me feel dated. Uh, so uh, uh, it was 25 years ago on uh, September 15th, 1987, which doesn't actually sound that long ago. No, it doesn't. Uh, the version 11 of release one of the X Windows system, aka X11. X11 was developed uh, a long way, has developed a long way mm-hmm. since then. But this 25-year-old technology out of MIT remains the heart of every Linux distribution. It only took three years to go from X1 to X11. Wow. But at 25 years later, we're still at version 11, technically. However, it's nothing really like it was back then. No, it's always evolving. It's, it's been completely remodularized and, uh, and things like that. Here's a few interesting facts, okay? Back in the original days of X11... Distributions could be ordered by sending a $150 USD check out to MIT in wow. exchange for a single nine-track 1600 BPI tape written in Unix tar format, God, along with it. a copy of the printed X window system documentation. People have it so good now. They don't <laughs> even know. They complain about stuff they get for free, and yet back in the day, people were ecstatic to drop a, you know, 150 bucks for a, for yep. a tape of, yep. I mean, oh, Well, you weren't going to download it. Oh, really? yeah, really. Uh, so, uh, it's postal mail, you know. Yeah, yeah. Pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, so it came out of MIT, but it was also it was also being worked on by uh, uh, DEC, Sun Microsystems, Tektronix, mm. and uh, IBM, and a few That's other so companies. Cool. So awesome! Happy birthday to X11, yeah, 25 definitely. years old. And of course, now we have. Uh, uh, we have not only is Wayland being worked on, but mm-hmm. uh, X12, the X12, oh, X12 server. Is still, okay. they're, they're drafting plans for it still. Spent so much time on Wayland, I totally did miss that. Yeah, cool. so you never know. Now, we'd be curious to see whatever replaces X11, how mm-hmm. long it sticks around for. It should be interesting. My bet would be not 25 years. No, I don't think so. I, 25 years in computer terms is like 2,000 years in real life. Right, twenty five years in technology. Pretty much, that's a lot. Think about has anything been used in Linux for. I mean, that that's essentially a generational difference. I mean, in eighty seven, we were probably doing a lot more fluorescent, and (laughs) I had spiky hair, and it was. (laughs) I I look like Spike from Buffy. I mean, you know, it was bad. So yeah, I mean, you know, this is a very different. That's a that's quite a span of time for it to uh, do so so well. There you go, and uh, it. it, it, and it still gets the job done. You know, people complain about it, but you think about how forward-thinking they must have been. When and, and 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 I should point out, when X11 was developed at the time, it was considered extremely forward-thinking. Yeah. You know, for yeah. Su- supporting all of these different buffer oh, features. Oh yeah. It was so just like, a lot going on. Yeah. 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 So uh, congratulations cool. to the X11 project. All right, Matt. All right. Well, that's all the news for this week. Let's go look at some of the best XFCE distros. <laughs> All right, Matt, let's take a look at some of the three best distros sent in by the Linux Action Show audience that supposedly are some of the best implementations of the XFCE desktop they've ever seen. Sounds good. Let's take a look. All right, now, before we get to that, I want to say thank you to System76 for sponsoring this week's segment. System76 is the preferred integrated solutions provider. Mm -hmm. How do you like that? I love it. So they they offer some great Ubuntu systems like this Wild Dog performance that they have sent us, and we use it for a lot of our distribution Mm -hmm. testing and software setups and all kinds of great little how-tos. And uh, thank you to System76 for their awesome support of the Linux Action Show. Two longtime customers mm-hmm. here. And I just saw System76 is now shipping to Mexico. They are. Uh, they are expanding like crazy. And hey, you know, you want to do something other than Ubuntu? It supports that as well. Every, I happen to run Fedora on mine. Everything we're going to talk about today will run just wonderfully yep. on a swimmingly on a System76. Yeah, I got like a tri-boot thing going on my own personal machine. Yeah. And then, of course, our uh, Wild Dog machine just runs like a champ with Ubuntu. Yeah. So that is awesome. And yeah. these are just great machines to run anything Linux if you don't want to have any hassle. So thank you to System76. Also, don't forget, uh, they have their back-to-school special, free 70, 750 gigabyte hard drive 
or a 500 gigabyte hybrid on all laptops. Mm-hmm. And nice. they can help you with your old PC if you want to recycle that and be responsible. Oh, that's awesome. All right, Matt. Check it out. Let's take a look at these few things. We'll talk it's about boogie. the we'll talk about uh, we'll 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 end on the distro that I think I'm gonna recommend people walk away with. Okay. So let's start in order of didn't work for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's okay. Let's, let's, go, let's jump right into the mess of it here. <laughs> let's just get out of let's get the negative step out of the way. All right. right. Let's do her. Now this first one I think is called No Sanja. Yo. No Sanja. It's N O S O N J A. And it is a very clean, it's maybe one of the cleanest, simplest looking out of all of the. Oh, I like the layout. Very nice layout. And, and the menu, I think, was really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that all in right. a minute. <laughs> so um, this is based on top of Arch. Uh, and uh, I, because I, my philosophy was if, I'm, if I want to use right. XFCE, mm-hmm. I'm probably a little bit more of a power user. Right. Maybe Ubuntu isn't the flavor I'm looking for. I want a really powerful distribution underneath me. Sure. Makes sense. And so this no Sanja is uh, got some great default choices. It's got an integrated little dock menu down here oh, at the nice. bottom. It's a nice little implementation. Yeah, it bounces. Here's the thing. All right. Rough around the edges when it comes to software package management. Yes, it offers you some very nice GUI front end tools to Pac-Man and the Arch repos. Mm-hmm. Out of the box, though, it failed to do updates. <sighs> it had a menu option to force updates. Mm-hmm. So I'm like. Maybe they run into this a lot, so maybe I, this is something you, I need that's to do. your go-to option. Because okay. pa- honestly, the packages were like were out of date, and they needed to be updated. Okay. So I ran Force Update after I did so. How'd that work out for you? Well, <laughs> Chrome no longer launches, and my XFCE <laughs> menu is now blank. It had a nice traditional lower left-hand start menu style. All my things nicely categorized out. Uh, all of that is is now been blanked well, out. Well, and here, here's the million dollar question with this now, because you know we all know how it is when someone that's new to a desktop comes in and something goes wrong, and it's like, oh, you know, well, you just kind of throw our hands up. Is this something that that was end user that was at fault, or do you think that this was in fact maybe um, a bug issue? I think if I was a bit of more of a Pac-Man whiz, I probably uh-huh. could have gotten around the okay. conflicts that were causing the upgrade to break. Okay, okay. Uh, but because I was using the tools available to me and the tools didn't expose those options and I'm not right. a Pac-Man expert. And because this is aimed at getting people into that world, yeah. it should yeah. have been addressed. Okay. I mean, you know, I used the update manager and it broke. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I can't get much more straightforward than that, yeah. So, but I think, like, if we had an audience member out there who, which we have a lot of, who are strong Arch users that just want something to quickly deploy Arch because this... You know, it's a live CD environment. Mm-hmm. You can test hardware compatibility. It has an install the desktop icon. And while it's an NCURSES installer, it's just, you know, yes, 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 next, next, next. Very easy to install. So if you want to just get rolling with Arch yeah. and you know what you're doing. I think, yeah, I think if you're willing to either, you, you either know what you're doing or you're willing to take the time or have have the time available. And we're both pretty pretty slammed, so that's not always an option for us. But if you have the time available, spend some time with the wiki. And I'm sure we can you can overcome these issues pretty yeah. easily. So that's cool. Now, what I would recommend, if you want to stick on the Arch path and you want a great slick XFCE setup, we've actually made it our distro pick. So I finally downloaded and gave it a look. It's Manjaro. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Now, this I'm impressed by. Also based on Arch, XFCE. Okay. Another they're, Arch. they're rocking a really, really slick, conky setup along the I top. I love the top, yeah. Oh, man, it gives me cool little feedback info. It gives oh, me my cool. uptime, my CPU And you usage. didn't have to set that up. No. That was out of the box. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the I like that. Okay. okay. Very, You're very winning cool. me over so far. No no default like menu down in the left-hand corner. Okay. However, you right-click on this bad boy, and you get your whole application menu here. Everything's nice. very nicely organized. Let's look at some of these defaults, because I don't always mention this stuff, but I, I think it's worth mentioning yeah. this. 7-Zip, uh, included as the default uh, p- extract, unextract. Uh, Pigeon is the default instant messenger, not Epiphany. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have... Uh, they have um, uh, and does it come with a clipboard manager by default? It looked like it did in accessories, and if it did, I love that. I think so, yeah, it does. Because yeah. that, to me, that's a big... Yeah. Thumbs up. Uh, here's, I love that. Uh, the, under the multimedia, under the multimedia and office section, again, really nice default choices, nice and quick. They've gone for efficiency and Expert, speed. Like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Love oh it. yeah. Love oh it. yeah. And uh, they use. I don't. I don't think it's the Ubuntu. Doesn't it look like Ubuntu software update manager to you? It well, and a lot. It does feel. It <laughs> actually feels a lot like it. But I would say that I've seen. I've seen somewhere else where. Yeah, it's sitting on top of Pack, but yeah. it's gorgeous. It's fast. And I was yeah. able to do my updates. You know, yeah. I, I installed and deployed updates, and they also have uh, a GUI uh, package manager. Well, that's cool. So right away, so as someone that wants to spend more time in, 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 in Arch. an Arch environment, yeah. that I can say, okay, I've yeah. got an old uh, an older PC that would probably be a great candidate for this. It's oh, an yeah. old HP Pavilion. Are you, I mean, are you seeing you know real snappy it's performance? Snappy, right. Yeah. Well, and the layout's not again. 
It's not because I can't. It's because I don't want to. It's it's allowing me to do things quickly and easily so that I can have my arch, but at the same time, I don't have to totally. kill myself doing it. Um, Here, that's cool. I'll install uh, Gnome so get, Solitaire, okay? Uh, so just as a test. We'll hit apply here, and uh, so it's gonna. It, it tells me... Uh, oh. That says the database. This is something I noticed both distros okay. do, is they have little utilities in the background that check for updates to notify you. So maybe something was running. They, they lock it. And the problem is, I don't know if it's Pac-Man or what, they lock it for like 10, 15 minutes sometimes. So, uh, oh, and here's, the, okay, here's Thunar. Okay. A very nice looking, I mean, yeah. that's very, very nice looking theme, right? This gorgeous. is very gorgeous. Um, yeah, good defaults. Actually. There's also uh, a bit of, uh, you know, a rebel feel to Manjaro, which I like. It, it feels mm -hmm. like it's uh, it's the anti-Ubuntu, uh, Zubuntu setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it definitely has that feel to it. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely see myself getting into this. It's stuff. very nice. You forget completely that you're sitting on top of something yeah. as complex as Arch, but yet it's just, it's at your fingertips, too. So that's Manjaro. Yeah. I have to say, uh, this Manjaro is sort of like... Uh, the, the the middle tier option. It's not super shiny like the next mm -hmm. one I'm about to show you. Okay, but it's not super plain like uh, the last n non San Joe or whatever. So it, it was. sounds like for Joe Average coming into it, uh, Joe Average being a, a reasonably experienced Linux enthusiast coming into this, they can get their arch on fairly easily. With the only exception being that lock in issued when you're trying to update. If you can get past that or time it. And Manjaro, so, you know, I I, you know, I did okay. I did a couple update sessions with really no challenges. Okay, so I'm installing updates and well, I'm like this. And, is and how's package availability? Is it pretty kinda, comparable? Uh, oh oh yeah. I mean, it's it's, okay. it's straight up 100% compatible with the whole Arch. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. cool. Okay. Now, uh, Grant, cool. I've only I only used it for three or four days so far, so I can't really speak to like down the road breakage. But, sure, uh, sure, sure. Yeah. All right, Matt. Now cool. here's one that I think is particularly interesting, especially mm. if you want to give a new user an uh, a a a really good XFC experience, and mm -hmm. you don't you know you don't uh, you don't mind maybe a little extra flair, yeah. taking a little extra memory, and that is. Voyager Linux. Now, here's Voyager Linux, Matt, and it is a slick setup. So, uh, they have included in here a, a very, very nice dock, which is hard to see, oh, unfortunately. See, and I, I, I love the wallpaper, but that dock it needs, uh, it needs to be oh, tweaked. That was my bad. I, oh, I, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, no, I did that. Oh, it's just re resolution or whatever. Okay. I changed the wallpaper, so it made it kind of hard. But they have different. They have a whole bunch. Now, remember when I mentioned the whole rebel thing? Yeah, yeah. This, oh, nice. This distro really has. You know, That's there's, there's awesome. There's pictures of girls on here. I mean, there's. I, I do it just for the wallpaper. Yeah, yeah there's all cool. kinds of great Taxi stuff. Taxi cabs. Um, now, now you, you mentioned the dock being small. Is that by default? Is that something you can? Adjust? I resized it. You can change it. Okay, it's, it's so a, if I if I want a bigger dock because I can't see. Uh, uh, you know, just the, the dock is the way yeah. they've done this dock. It's pretty. And again, this is conky, and you can go through. They have conky included in here, and oh, they okay. have conky scripts that let you set up really, really cool like displays of system information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, everything from top to bottom in Voyager Linux is very, very well integrated, very smooth, uh, and it's again, smooth, uh, yeah. uh, excellent, excellent defaults. Uh, let's take a look at some of our uh, things. So under mm -hmm. multimedia, it's shipping by default with Clementine Kazam VLC? Screencaster, nice. okay. right? You love Kazam VLC. Oh, yeah. C as the as the default video player, mm -hmm. Win FFmpeg for a front end to FFmpeg. Uh, under the internet, you've got Firefox again. Pigeon, it's got Hot Tot, the uh, nice. the lightweight uh, Twitter client. They've yeah. also built in uh, Tor chat, so if you want to chat over the Tor encrypted networks, all of this stuff included right into Voyager Linux, and, and uh, because it sits on top of Ubuntu twelve oh four, my hardware support is exactly in line with Ubuntu supports. My package updates are exactly in line with okay. what Ubuntu supports. Installing a PPA it works just like it does on 12.04. So where the other distros are based on Arch, this one's based on Ubuntu. But it seems faster than the other uh, Ubuntu derivatives. It's very peppy. Yeah. Very peppy. Interesting. So you could have your, if you're an Ubuntu guy, you could do your Ubuntu and have it, and, and actually go this route and still have some speed. That's cool. Yeah. They And, and okay. I got to say, it... Uh, it integrates a lot of the things out of the box that I think power users add. Like, I know, right. Matt, one of the first things you install out of the box is Synapse, right? Oh, yeah. Synapse. It's, yeah I, I'm a keyboard guy. Boom. I don't want Synapse to Synapse is loaded out of the box. You've got, uh, uh, oh, they've got, uh, they've got 3D this. compositing turned on. They've got, they've got oh. transparencies on here. Oh, nice. Uh, they've got Gwake in here, you know, the, uh, the uh, slide down uh, yeah. terminal that's built in right there. All of this stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. and, and you almost forget you're even on XFCE. Yeah, when you're it's kind of got some this. frosting going on. I like this. Lots of frosting. I love it. And, and what's great is because, now, and I think it's actually a feature that it's based on Ubuntu, but yet it feels a little abstracted. It doesn't. Well, it's it's like it's like a lighter uh, lighter Ubuntu with all the stuff I'm going to do anyway. Yeah, you know, it's done for me. It's yes. So basically, again, from a time efficiency point of view, it's it's I get that I, I'm I'm a big you know package management guy, and so for me, it's got the packages I want, but without all the right. the cruft. So you
you can know. see here, I can toggle different themes on their dock they have down here. And this is AWN. It's just, uh, it's really nice, wow. very configurable, very elegant. They've done, they've restrained themselves in the design department in some ways. I have, I don't think I've ever seen an XFCE distribution that is this shiny, this much fun to use, and it has sort of this rebel feeling. Now, the downside is, is I believe it's French. So if you go to their oh. website, you're going to have a hard time reading it. And that's you can one translate, of, right? I mean, you could you can make it work. Oh yeah, Chrome will translate it by default. And, and, and all your troubleshooting is Ubuntu based, so you just go to the stuff. Exactly. That. So that's easy. Exactly. So, yeah, I have a machine at home that I could actually see this being a real natural fit for. It's a little more powerful. Uh, the machine's a little more powerful, and I could see this definitely being oh, man. The, the way to get into this desktop a little more permanently. I like this. I think Voyager Linux for really those cool. of us who want. See, here's why I always struggle with uh, XFCE. Mm. What I'm, what I'm, what draws me to Unity, what draws me to KDE four, and what draws me to GNOME three is I feel like they're on this path forward of a modern desktop. They are, and I don't want to be like Mister nineteen nineties here saying I don't want this newfangled stuff, and I want my desktop just the way it is. Where I feel like right. some of that's legit though, right? It, there's it functionality, is, it is. but there. for, for power users like using a desktop like this, uh, Comp is you know, for instance, you want that to auto start. You actually, at least on uh, on the uh, distros I've used, you actually have to set that up to install, you know, uh, or install to start up on its own in startup applications. So little things, little little massaging you have to do behind the scenes compared to uh, straight Ubuntu distribution to where it's going to all work for you out of the box. But I'm okay with doing that because yeah. I can get a lighter weight desktop. I can get a faster and experience. I've always felt though, like know? when I do like a straight up Ubuntu install yeah. or I just do like, I, I installed the XFCE pattern on OpenSUSE yeah. and it's like, okay, this is a great desktop, but it's plain. It's a little boring. Right. It's not exciting me. I'm not getting excited about it. And it's so very then functional. you have to make the time investment to make it exciting right. where... Voyager Whereas Linux Voyager does it for you. <laughs> or Manjaro, yeah. these are out of the box. Very compelling. Voyager, to me, in my estimation, is the most compelling. Yeah. It ships with the most apps by default that I prefer. Clementine, VLC, Synapse, Quake. Uh, it, I like the dock element. I think the combination of the dock and the right-click applications menu with very good organization yeah. is extremely functional. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, they've they've taken they've taken XFCE and they make they feel like it was developed and created in 2012. I like this. Yeah, I, I love the fact that so now we have our Ubuntu base derivative option, and now and as well, you know, we have the Arch, you know, Arch. And options. then we did our so distro cool. pick Vector, which is yeah. uh, which is uh, uh, Slackware, as long as Slacks is another. Great that's cool. One. And as far as the chat, the chat room is yeah. also saying check out Sabian with XFC. Yes, I've heard good things about Sabian. Um, and uh, maybe as an honorable mention for a very good, although I have, I, I, for some reason, when I think of Linux Mint 13 XFCE yeah. edition, I think a tad boring. It, 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 once you've been, once you've been there, done that, it, you do you want it, You find yourself going to stuff like this because you want to try something new and different and exciting. Yeah. And Linux Mint isn't. Uh, it's great for newbies. But, it's cool. It's a yeah. great distro. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. just their XFCE desktop. Its strength is how it's. Yeah. It's just a good, solid, basic yeah. desktop. Yeah, that's good. That's what it's supposed to be. Sure. Whereas, whereas Voyager Linux and uh, Manjaro yeah. are are going off and trying to create something for power users that's uh, a delight to use. I think mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. uh, no, they, I, I'm definitely loving that. I actually, yeah, I got a I got a place. I'm going to install that when I get home. There you go. So if uh, you're an XFC user, check these out and let us know Woo. what you think. That's the Linux Action Show's roundup of some of the best XFCE desktops sent into the show. And that brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. Now, before we get out of here, Matt, what do you say we answer some emails? Let's do it. Actually, I'm a horrible person. Uh oh. I didn't. Uh -oh. Uh oh. We have the email address Linux Action Show JupiterBroadcasting.com, and every Saturday I sit down, I, I I read through the emails, and I try to bring a batch to the show. Uh, but I, I was having so much fun with uh, Manjaro and Voyager Linux that I, I got carried away, uh -oh. and I only got to the stuff that was posted to the subreddit this week. So oh, okay. I don't want people to think that if, uh, I'm ignoring their emails. I just apologize. I got a little yeah. busy this week. We're still reading. But we got a couple of good ones that I do want to get to. And the first one that was submitted to the subreddit from DBT816 says, mm -hmm. uh, how about Netflix for uh, Linux users? I'm looking input on what Linux users do to watch Netflix to make it work for them. Do you simply use a separate Windows or Mac machine? Do you do a boot? Do you run Windows in a VM? Maybe a Netflix-capable device to watch? I'd really love to know. Um, and uh, I think probably almost everyone in our audience that uses Netflix probably yeah. wants to know this. Uh, I have a very simple answer for what that. What do you got for me? Uh, for myself, personally, I use a Roku box. That's a big win for me. Uh, another option is if you have a gaming console. Most of them support Netflix at some level. Wii, Xbox, whatever. Hey, Matt, this is one of those uses for uh, those tablets that you're always uh, docking. Yeah, yeah, no, you, if you want to, uh, you know... Hold up a little thing. And <laughs> they stare come at it. stands. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. look at this. Yeah. See my Evo. You, you can run Netflix on my Evo. Look oh at no, this, no. Matt. I mean, at, like I went stand. to the dentist office recently, and I've you know I've watched stuff on smartphone. But I'm, yeah, 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 it's just 
for myself, if you want if you want HDMI into your TV set, you know that's a good way to go. Mm-hmm. Roku is a really awesome way to go, and I'll tell you why because you can also get Jupiter Broadcasting on your Roku. That's true. J- that's how JBTV I is the uh, channel code. Yep. Um, so I like to watch Netflix though. Like there's certain types of movies because some of the movies on Netflix aren't that great. So I don't yeah. mind if I'm not giving them 100 percent of my attention, and Ooh. so I like to watch them in a window. So this really burns yeah, me a yeah. lot. Um, and you can try virtual machines, and you'll yeah. get varying degrees of performance. Yeah. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. And I wanted to put this question out. We've already had uh, 17 different comments in this thread where people have made suggestions. Some different efforts or some different ideas are in there. I don't think anybody's nailed a solution yet. Not really. I mean, if you're doing it like next to a computer, then I can see a tablet totally working for you. So you can set it next to your computer. But I think outside of a tablet or a box component situation to your television set, I don't see it happening on your desktop. I just it's, don't see it. It just burns me so bad because I'm a Netflix customer. I have been since forever. Yeah. And uh, they. They use Netf- Netf- they use Linux on the back end. They use Linux uh, on the devices they support, like the BoxyBox that I use to watch Netflix on, or uh, the Chrome OS devices. Mm-hmm. Those run Linux. Or Android devices that run Netflix also run Linux, as well as the Roku. The Roku right. runs Linux. All of these devices play Netflix. Uh, so, uh, it, And it's not that Netflix is actively saying, I'm not going to support well, Linux. The fact that it's Hulu studios. does use Flash, so it's not like they can't. Right. I mean, it's been well. Done. They're using Silverlight. And they're yeah, using and the that's, DRM, and I think there's a yeah. vested interest with someone that right. works for Netflix, and this right. is the reason why. Uh, well, there, yeah, so. there's some board members sharing yeah. there. So I think that's probably why you're not going to see that change until until Silverlight is simply so far not supported any longer that uh, you know. Amazon Prime, yeah. I say, is the way to go. Amazon Prime. Yeah. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you get the streaming free. It works under Linux. Yes, it requires Flash, but it works. Yeah, it works really well. But I wanted to put this out there. We'll have a link to this thread in the show notes. If somebody out there has a really good solution on how they do it, and I was wondering, like, what well, I think you, Chrome OS, which is, of course, also based on I think you can do it there. So would that maybe run in a VM better than Windows? Audience might be able to answer that. Yeah. Could, you know, have you guys ever successfully run Chrome OS in a VM? Let uh, us know. If we get a few people saying this is what they do and it looks like a viable solution, we'll try it here on the show and tell people how to do it. Because this just yeah. this, this, we got to get some kind of work around. I mean, ridiculous. maybe you can even just dedicate a netbook to it. You know, yeah. Slap it on that and I guess park so. it next to your desktop. I, it'd, be, it'd be nice to be able to do it all in yeah. your Linux, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Ghost Squad fifty seven in the subreddit who created a GNOME two ish application as he calls nice. it and a system menu for XFCE. So I thought this was really relevant to today's episode. Oh, cool. So he's got some screenshots in there. He's made a system menu that you can throw to your throw <laughs> on your panel. That's cool. Yeah, nice. great. Gives you access That's to awesome. your administration options or logging out right there. He's also created this application menu, which, as you might expect, gives you access to uh, a lot of your immediate apps. I like it. Uh, he's included uh, installation instructions with the download. There's no compiling needed. It's just an XML file with a dot menu extension, and uh, we'll have easy. a link to that in the show notes. Slick. Yeah, so go play with well that. Well done. Now, uh, the uh, <laughs> hey, it's Ryan. That's a great one. I like that. Who has the PC Linux OS flare on our subreddit, mm-hmm. writes in and asks, has the Linux Action Show done an LXDE, LXDE desktop review? Hey, guys, love the show. I discovered it about a month ago, and I've been going right. back and watching all of the past shows while I'm at work. <laughs> Good man. Good. Yeah. That works, too. Yeah. That works, I too. really love hearing your reviews on different distros and desktops, and I saw you f- you fairly recently reviewed XFCE. Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. And I don't see a review of LXDE. Having used both, I keep going back to LXDE, LXDE due to using OpenBox, which has a large community of users making themes for it and it also allows full color customization right out of the gate personally i use pc linux os lxde and lxde edition nice. and find it to be the most comfortable linux issue i have ever used that being said i'm in no way a linux power user so i would love to hear the opinions from chris and matt on the desktop environment keep up the great work and we've had some people chime in their thoughts on lxde yeah. I think it's a good desktop, and I think the fact that you're using uh, PC Linux OS is a great way to get your feet wet with it, especially if you're not a power user. Uh, it's a gr- it's a solid distribution for when mm-hmm. you just want things to work really mm-hmm. really well. Um, that being said, uh, you know I, I'm I'm not a huge fan of it personally. I like some of the other desktops more, but you know it's not bad. You might play with it at some point. You know yeah. we did a we I do did have a, it running on a computer right now, but I don't use it that much. Uh, I think it was like towards the end of last season or something. We did a maybe it was the beginning of this season. We did a poll on desktop usage. Mm-hmm. LXDE amongst the audience rated kind of low. Yeah, but uh, you know it's not off. It's not. It's not out no. of the realm of possibility. No. And I do. I do run it. Just not every day. And now we got a uh, video message from uh, uh, somebody on our subreddit. Mm-hmm. I, I, I missed the name, uh, but he created an awesome screencast to show us why E17 rocks. Matt, I think maybe we could just play a few seconds of yeah. that, and then we'll let people go check out the full. Video Welcome to this little screencast where I want to show you why E17 rocks and why. 
Welcome to this little screencast where I want to show you why E17 rocks and why even the Linux Action Show should care about it. So this is the stock E17 okay. configuration after I just ran... So we'll let you guys check out the full video, but he's got a... Uh 30 minute screencast of uh, E17 and why he thinks it rocks, including uh, overviewing some of the new features that I didn't even know E17 had now. Uh, like, uh, looks desktop, pretty good. I, I mean, yeah. it, it definitely feels different, but it does not look bad. Yeah. So, so uh, cool. there you go. Check that out. Uh, I guess the sound was a little messed up for the uh, for the audience. So, sorry about that, guys. Oh, man, sorry. You know what happens is, is we capture our audio over HDMI and. When it sits there for a little bit, if you don't use it for about yeah. 20, 30 minutes, it gets all funky. Exactly. So, a little dusty. That. Yeah, it gets, it gets a little dusty. It gets a little dusty, but we're yeah. going to have the video up in the show notes so you can check yeah, it out. Yeah, exactly. And uh, now, before we roll out of here, last week we asked folks, oh should the Linux Action to do a Gen 2 review? <laughs> should we do a Gen 2 review? Hmm, hmm. Hmm. What do you suppose people said, Matt? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my envelope to the head, do a little Johnny Carson here. I'm going to say, you know, honestly, I think they said yes. 82%. Of the audience that voted out of 588 wow. votes, which isn't too shabby, uh, 484 people said, yeah, do a Gen 2 review. 18% said, nah, let's do something else that's kind of boring. Mm. Uh, pretty interesting wow. stuff. Uh, a lot of people said, though, just do one episode. So we might see if we can yeah. consolidate it down to one episode. It may be uh, just kind of a general experiences, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, now that, that, this, that, and the other thing. That won't necessarily be next week. We're going to take yep. a little time. We want to spend our time mm -hmm. on that. Next week, however, we're going to talk about PCBS. Or no, we're going to uh, do that. No, that's in two weeks. Two weeks PCBS. No, we're going to do a. Uh, uh, we were just talking about it on the. Uh, oh, uh, basically getting the uh, the most out of your uh, desktop performance for, you know, tweaks. Yeah, performance power tweaks, usage tweaks. The real concentrating factor I want is to get uh, the most battery life you can out of your notebooks on Linux. Uh, in my particular case, it's Ubuntu. Uh, th th that type of thing, basically, um, you know, maximizing RAM usage, uh, trying to use, you know, avoiding the use of swap. Uh, I think it's prefetch or preload. Oh yeah, preload. Yeah, sure. yeah preload. Pre things like that. I have a list of stuff that I'm going through. A list, and I'm doing an article for that that should be out Monday, like tomorrow or Tuesday, and you can check that out. And then we'll be talking about it uh, coming up. Where would I find show. that article? Man? You will find it at datamation.com backslash open source. And as always, you can find me doing weird and crazy things at matthartley.com. And I actually just did. I'm going to be doing a couple videos. One's up now, and there's one that's coming out here that probably next couple of days that it's going to be really weird. Hey, no, we gotta, you should be, give props. Uh, Matt, when I say weird, they, I do little intros to make the uh, the initial oh, YouTube okay. experience right. a little more fun and okay. then to get into the how-to stuff from there. <laughs> so uh, You just did a good one for people out there that want to podcast yeah. under Linux. Uh, how to podcast with Skype on Ubuntu. Yep, how to capture that audio. Yeah, that's a great how-to because I've had a lot of people write into the show asking how do you record Skype audio under Linux. And with the exception of having to uh, install one uh, library, package it's pretty simple you just run it it's open source uh initially on the video i said that it wasn't but it actually turns out it is and it works really really well and you can set a lot of features up you can pick your capture folder it's pretty cool very nice so uh you can check out a link to that in the show notes yep. and i'll also toss a link to that in the chat room if people are interested in doing that and feel free to share it yeah absolutely let people know so uh that's uh, so we have a couple of weeks worth of stuff coming up mm -hmm. and then october is going to be a crazy month oh, so crazy. boy a lot of big stuff coming up on the show um now I'd like to hear your thoughts on any topics you'd like to hear us cover on the show, so email them in, linuxactionshow at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And, of course, we also have the subreddit over at linuxactionshow.reddit.com where you can submit stories into the show, vote on topics that you think we should cover, mm -hmm. ask questions to us or the community, and all those kinds of things are all happening over at linuxactionshow.reddit.com. We're here. We're listening. Yeah. All right, Matt, I think that's the whole show. Works. That's the whole show right there. The so uh, Now, the Linux Action Show is live every Sunday morning over jblive.tv. Go to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar to see our whole production calendar and as well as a time zone converter so you can convert it to your local time. Very handy. And uh, then you can download it Sunday afternoons in just about any format you want, including Og Theora. And if you watch it in HTML5, you'll even watch it in WebM. Nice. You don't even know what's doing that, but it just I does like all that, that for you That's cool. So, yeah. Nice, nice, Check nice. out that HTML5 player. We're always making little tweaks to it, so I always like to hear feedback on that, too. Awesome. Uh, all right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Linux Action Show, and I'll see you right back here next week. Some feedback. All right. All right. Let's do some feedback. I salute you, XFCE Desktop, and now we will review you. <laughs> Woo. I'm going to take the biggest leak after this. <laughs> <laughs>